Um, I'll apologise for my slides up front. Uh, we heard Garth question his ability on PowerPoint yesterday, but Garth is a mastermind in PowerPoint compared to me. So here we go. Um, just a little bit of context about South Australia. It's estimated to be a $1 billion uh, industry in South Australia. Um, generally speaking, waste is unnoticed unless your bin gets missed or you get stuck behind a truck. Local government is responsible for about 30% of uh, the waste, but as we all know, local government actually doesn't generate much waste itself. It handles it on behalf of its constituents. And councils either contract it out, provide it in-house day labour, or in South Australian context, form a subsidiary such as East Waste to collect <coughs> curbside bins. Um, just a couple of recent quotes here, just to provide a little bit of context. Um, really what they're talking about is uh, the use of technology to get smarter in the way that we provide our services to our community. Uh, and in this case, I'll be talking about GPS and RFID, um, but also there's some work being done around sensors and opportunity costs about collecting bins. The third one there is an interesting one for me, certainly from a South Australian context, we're losing a lot of our manufacturing industry um, and we're starting to hear language and narrative about waste being a re-manufacturing industry. We, we take a product, we, we use logistics to transport it, and then we either make a new product or we dispose of it and make gas or electricity. So to me that, that resonates strongly and I think that we do sit in that space of re-manufacturing. Um, so who are we? So we're owned by six councils in the eastern suburbs of South Australia. We handle uh, around about 30% of Adelaide's feedstock and we've got a board and an independent chairman and we've got me and 48 staff, most of them are drivers. Um, this is our partnership matrix, so um, probably can't see it that well, but basically we've got a councils down the side and then a set of services that we provide across the top. So what you can see there, it's not homogenous, so we don't provide the same service to all of our member councils. They can opt in and opt out of different bits and pieces. Um, what we are doing is looking to provide smarter and better service offerings to our communities, uh, mostly around hard waste, and I was interested to hear Mark's talk just then. Uh, we're certainly looking at more at-call hard waste services um, and some social enterprise stuff rolled in. Okay, so that's how we do it. We've got 37 trucks and we assign them using a common fleet. Now this is a pretty important point. Um, so in most contracts, if you contract out or you, or, or you run day labour, you're confined by the boundaries of your council area. Uh, we are not because we have six councils, so we can get a lot of efficiencies by ploughing through council boundaries and collecting waste uh, to get the most optimisation of our fleet. Uh, what I am going to talk about is the GPS and productivity and, and those sort of metrics that we measure ourselves on. Uh, interestingly, our one and only KPI of all of our councils is we return greater than 95% of the bins back on the ground, on the kerb, with the lid shut. Uh, nothing clever about this slide, apart from the fact that I got to work early one day and took that photo. Um, the risks in a collection system are large and are getting bigger. Um, the, the, the one there that I focus on, and certainly uh, internally, we spend a lot of time on at East Waste is people. Uh, we invest in our people, um, but we expect our people to invest in East Waste. And by doing that, we try and provide the safest workplace we possibly can. GPS and, uh, to a lesser extent, RFID tracking plays a huge role in providing a safe workplace. Um, so we collect about 180,000 bins per week, every week, and again, bins back, lid shut. Okay, so what's the objective of using telematics, GPS and RFID? Basically it's measurement. So if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So we talk about future proofing and reducing risk, uh, increasing optimization and customer service, but really what it does, it provides you with a bunch of data. What you choose to do with that data uh, is up to you and will be defined by what you're trying to achieve, but it provides an immense amount of data. Asset management 
in particular, and where, where I'm talking about asset management of both the fleet and your bins. Sometimes the bins get unnoticed in your asset management systems, but a lot of cases they're multi-million dollar investments and you should manage those assets properly. You can use the same platform that I'll show you shortly um, to manage both your GPS, your optimization, and your bin asset. Okay, so how do we use it? Um, we use two separate platforms. One's a web-based um, product which uh, sits on Google Maps and on that product you can track your fleet movements, their speed, um, sometimes too much speed, um, and also a interface back in the office which is a custom service interface and that's where we plug all of our bins into and manage the asset for the whole life of the bin. Okay, so why would I use GPS and RFID in my collection system? So if you're currently looking at writing a tender for uh, a contract, collection contract, or even a bin supply contract, um, these perhaps are some of the stuff you should be thinking about. Fit for work. So we, as I said, we've got 38 drivers that we invest heavily in. We want to make sure that they're fit for work on our screens before they uh, can hit the ignition, they need to acknowledge a pre-start check that they are fit for work. Customer service, we have real-time access to bin collections, time, not wait yet, but watch this space, and presentation. So we often get those phone calls, you missed my bin. Our customer service team have got real-time access, they can look it up and see where our truck is and that it's just past your house and your bin wasn't out. Training. We have route mapping and uh, laying overlays so we can record uh, a complete collection run and then we have new drivers or casual drivers. They can simply hit map replay and follow the collection run because we know that's the quickest and the safest way to do that run. Line worker. Uh, it's, we, it's a spot device. Um, basically in areas of low mobile phone coverage we have a device as long as they've got a GPS access to a GPS signal uh, they can alert myself and our safety officers and operations manager that perhaps they're in trouble. Repair and maintenance again uh, automated servicing so uh, we go by truck hours rather than kilometres. Uh, we have the entire system scheduled in uh, to our platform and it tells us when our fleet is due for servicing. Reputation, and I'll touch on this in a minute, but this is, this is a key one for us. Um, because our councils, uh, perhaps some of the more boutique councils in South Australia, their reputation is very important, and therefore it's very important to us. We use GPS and RFID tracking to protect their reputation. Cost allocation. Um, as far as I know, we're one of the only collection providers that allocates costs entirely on time. So it's not a per service entitled premises, it's not a lift rate, it's time. So if you want us to do more work or a bespoke co uh, collection, um, it's going to take more time and therefore more cost. Conversely, we try and be as efficient as we can to reduce the time. Driver performance, again touching on the data, we, we get exceptional reports about speeding, about harsh braking, about excessive idling, about not taking breaks or taking too long breaks and utilisation. We can measure our productive time versus our unproductive time. And again, you're starting to get a sense of how much data these systems can provide you. Public amenity. We've got alerts set up and they're called geofences. So we've got streets uh, that we know we're not allowed to get into at certain times. And also we've got streets that we know we're allowed to get into a little bit earlier. We set those up. If a driver nudges into that street, it sets off an exception report, goes to his manager or her manager, and eventually comes to me and we deal with that problem. I was going to run you through a demonstration, uh, but Tim and Shane from uh, Three Logics are here, so if you want to see this system that we use in action, go and see the boys uh, at the Three Logic stand. What does it do? It allows real-time access to data, location stamping for each collection. It allows the identification of stolen bins, bins not out, bins out of position, illegitimate bins, double, triples, we've seen it all, and of course, legitimate services. It tells us, yes, that bin is meant to be there and we're collecting it. 
It allows real-time exception reporting, rejection status and photographic evidence. So we can start to now look at our community behaviour at a really minute level. We look at contamination per suburb or contamination per street. So the driver can hit a contamination button, which alerts us. We can pull that data off and start to really target our education. Again, it allows for a lot of data, communications and two-way messaging. We find this really important with our drivers. Um, sometimes the two-way system is, um, is misused. We call it East Waste FM. It's just constant chatter. What we can do if we can't get through to the drivers on the two-way, we can hit, send them a, uh, basically an SMS to their GPS navigation screen and, uh, and get a message through that way. It allows you to manage your bin asset. So as I said, sometimes we go out and buy a couple of million dollars worth of bins, we roll them out, set and forget. You can't do that. They're an important asset to your council and your community. You need to manage them. We do that by using our GPS customer interface. And that's a whole of life. So when that bin gets repaired or replaced, we take it off the system. Otherwise it stays on that system identified to a property. And it allows you to engage with your residents. We have some greedy residents there. He's done pretty well to get all that in. Uh, we have forgetful residents, so bin not out. Again, this gentleman would ring us a little bit later and say that we missed your bin. We have difficult residents. You can't see that one too much, but there's cars parked either side of the street, so we can't get in. Uh, we have needy residents. This uh, household needed a repair of a lid by the looks of it. We have disengaged residents who just feel they can do whatever they like. <laughs> we have more greedy residents there. We have littering residents here. And we have stupid residents. Unbelievable. What this does do, it starts to paint a picture that you have access to this amount of data, real time, when you can talk to your councils or talk to your residents and get a real clear understanding of what their need is. Stupid, stupid residents. What it doesn't do. So this is RFID tracking, what it doesn't do. It does not allow you to charge your residents by weight yet. It does not allow you to incentivise your residents yet. It does not allow you to set and forget your bin assets, and I keep harping on about that, but I feel it's important. It does not optimise your routes. If you have a technology provider telling you we can optimise your routes, ask some more questions. Find out what they mean by that because they don't necessarily optimise your routes. It doesn't interrogate yourself. You need to manually go in there and pull out the data. Uh, the product we use is quite good. It has um, some bespoke reporting uh, just for East Waste because we have different metrics than perhaps a commercial provider, but it doesn't do it itself. You need to go in and tell it. And it doesn't replace good old-fashioned contract management and communication. So don't rely on this to be your contract manager. Okay, so this is my simple way of fixing everything. What are you trying to fix? What are you trying to get better? Are you trying to manage your bin asset? Are you trying to determine community behaviour? Or are you trying to get better? Find, consult, consult with your staff. We, Lindy just talked about internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, consult. Then set your objectives. What are you trying to get to? If it's just managing your bin asset, you could probably get away with just a simple RFID tracking system. But if you're trying to get smarter and you're trying to perhaps do your contractor payments based on lifts and lift rates, that's gonna be a different set of circumstances altogether. What's your alternatives? So what are your options for getting better? What are the best ones to reach your objectives? So again, these are the conversations you should be having within your uh, tender 
procurement team, with your council staff, your management, or in the commercial space with your business partners. Again, consult, consult often and consult consistently. Ask the right questions, ask them often. Develop your strategy. So this is really your actions for meeting your strategic objectives and it documents your strategic intent. Don't be scared to talk with industry experts. I find this a really important point. Sometimes in council land, we, we shy away from talking to people before we go out to a formal tender process. I find it extremely helpful to go and find the experts, talk to them. It doesn't conflict them out of the tender situation. It doesn't conflict you for using them down the track, but it does provide you with good contemporary information. There's some very smart people in our industry. Talk to them. Be clear about what you're asking for and why and how you're going to evaluate it. Some of these technologies look the same and sound the same, but they're absolutely not. So be very clear with what you're trying to do. So our outcomes is a reduction in claims and property damage. We've seen a reduction in lost time and downtime. We've seen a reduction in complaints, reduction in costs, and very happy councils. What comes next? So we've got the glass of wine. We're looking at integrated GPS and RFID asset management. That's already here. We're doing that. A maturing conversation around what we can do with this technology, how we can get better as an industry, and how our communities can benefit from that. Targeted education. As I said, we can go down from suburb, we can go to street, we can go to household level about what our community behaviour is. We can use this technology to target. We've all got budget pressures on our education spend. You've got information here about what you need to do. Changing behaviour through incentives. This is big. This is where we're heading and this is where I think hopefully as an industry we might head. Is Forget about charging by weight and the stick approach. Let's incentivise people to use their green and yellow bins. Let's make it easier for them to do it and let's reward them to do it. We can get weight data and we can get lift rate and presentation rate, all this data, so we can start to see our, our community behaviour change. Through the bottle now, this was last night, um, bin weighing, user pays and incentivising. Uh, 360 degree cameras, I think this is big, our insurers are already talking to us about that, and I call them environment, environmental scans, so looking out and um, looking at what's in front of you, behind you. Environmental costs and opportunity costs, I think we're almost there. When a resident rings up and says, hey, I forgot to put my bin out, or you've missed my bin, we can now know the actual cost of the 45-minute run to go to that property to collect that bin and come back. Is that fair on all the rest of the ratepayers? That's not my question to answer, but I can provide my councils with that information. And privacy laws. You get a lot of data out of this stuff. Okay, so why is it taking so long? Um, because originally I think we were over-promising, but that is changing. Our community behaviour is there. We've had some unrealistic unreal expectations. I've heard a bunch of stuff. Oh, RFID is going to fix this and GPS will fix that. Not so. Old industry practices and high density. Um, that was some stuff when we rolled this out in Tweed. Um, it actually worked quite well, but I didn't handle the community consultation that well. Uh, and what are we doing? That's some other stuff that we're doing. The, um, and, and just in generally about curbside collections, I think we're already there, 360s, 660s, 1100s, multi-unit dwellings, getting smarter about that, less truck movements, um, greater amenity. Uh, customer service interfaces. Yeah, so I think we're almost there. Um, but this incentivising, I, I, I think there's real legs in that. So concluding remarks, know what it is that you want from your technology. Okay, so I've run through a couple of, and hopefully expelled a couple of the myths about what it does and doesn't do. So just know what you want from it. Be clear with your objectives and stick to it. So don't see something else shiny and then go over there. Don't do that. Um, GPS, RFID and telematics can reduce and reallocate risk. And that's very important in such a public service that we do in running around collecting garbage bins. It won't solve everything. And then just some other concluding remarks. Talk to each other, collaborate. There's some really smart, clever people in the industry. Talk to them and talk to each other, learn from each other. And that's what I guess we're doing here. Uh, be active in this discussion and, and WAMA uh, is, our, is our advocacy body. Use, use them, use your state presidents and your branches, go and be active. Uh, and that's it, and that's all of us. Thank you.